So I'll continue with some um, little bit of actual writing now with all that Guru has told in the morning. This is again one way to organize your writing. This is not the only way. So this is based on one uh, organized way of uh, um, writing the, putting the contents. What we will do today is, I hope all of you have done some project or the other, okay. So um, many of your PhDs, masters project you have done, want you to take one of those projects, okay. And we are going to write a quick kind of summary of the project, okay. Right? So that is what the goal of this exercise is. And we will try to reinforce what we learned so far and put that in this framework. Okay? Right. So as we saw before, the scientific method has got these steps. There is an observation. Okay? Based on the observation, you come up with a question. Okay? Which is the question that you are answering in your work? So formulating a question itself is a difficult thing, but let us say you have done that. And then you go to the literature, see, read what has been done before in that area. If uh, it is already been solved, if it has not been solved, what are the some related information? So that is the literature. And then you come up with a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a, a guess answer. It is an answer, but it is a guess answer to the question. Okay, so far it is only a guess answer. Unless you prove it by some independent means. So till now this is just a guess answer. Now let us say the exercise that we are doing now okay, is not after you have completed your work. Okay. As Guru said, you, start, you write, you write every day and very importantly you write before actually you do the work. Okay. I repeat, you write what question, you write what is the hypothesis that you think could be, you do not know whether it is true. And if that is true, what is the test that you should do? Not that this is the test I did. It is very, very important to begin your research work or development work, any, any work by writing out these things, except that it is all tentative. Okay? At the end of say one year or six months of project, all these things will get finalized. But even before do the work, you should start writing. So that is what we will begin with. So how do we begin? As I said, we need to write this in the form of a question and an answer. Okay? Just as when you read a paper that day, you wrote it as a question. Okay, and a question has got a topic, the question and its significance. Similarly, the answer is the claim, reason and evidence. Now, when you read it from somebody, somebody's paper, that is they have already completed the work. So that time all these things were clear. <coughs> but now you have not completed the work, you have just started. Where are you? You are here. You are just at the observation and you have to formulate a question, you need to write all of these things. How do you write all of these things before you complete, before you even begin the work? But it is important to do that because this is what is going to guide you what to do. Okay? I will take a simple example. Let us say I have got one door on that side, I have got one door on that side. Okay, there are two doors. Behind one door, there is a treasure. Okay, there is behind one of these doors, there is a treasure. That is the observation. That I have been told that there is a treasure behind one of these doors. So my question is, where is the treasure? Okay. Now, based on some literature or some understanding, I'll take a guess that the treasure is behind that door is my hypothesis, is my guess. At the moment, I have not proved it. Okay? Now, if this guess is true, how do I execute and reach there? Then you will say, if, my, if the hypothesis is this, I take step 1, I take step 2, then I do this, then I do this, 
then I reach there. And you go and open the door, it's there or it's not there. So then your hypothesis is failed or correct. So very similarly, any project that you undertake, even before you start working, you need to have a sense of where you're going. And the sense of what to do tomorrow, what to do next week, what to do next month will come only if you have a guess answer. If you don't have a guess answer, you don't know where to go. If I don't take a guess that it is one of, it's behind that, I may just go somewhere else. I need to take a guess to establish a goal. And that goal is this hypothesis or the claim. And to establish that, I say, okay, if it was there, I will follow these steps. That is, I will do these, these, these set of experiments to get to that. Or I will do solve these, these, these equations to get to that and so on. Okay. So all this is to be done every day. So today you do something, you get, maybe you, you get some test which already shows that it is not there. You have to revisit and change your hypothesis already. Okay, so it's, that's why it's important to write every day. So uh, get to write like this almost every day that you do your work. All right. So now, now let's map these things to this. Question. Question is this. That's straightforward. The literature is something which gives you the reason for your claim. So your hypothesis is the actual claim that you think that it is there. Why do you think it is there? Because I know from my previous knowledge that um, that road is not accessible, people can only come there, something like that. Some logic that you use, why it could be there. So that comes from your previous knowledge, which is literature. That is the reason. And then your claim. Now, your claim is not yet a claim because you have not yet proved it. Once you have finished your work, which is after one year, the claim is a claim. But now what is it? It is simply a guess. It is as, as good as just a plain guess. But it is not a random guess. It is a calculated guess from your literature. So the reason comes, why do you think it is there? I think there because I know that these things are true, therefore it could be there. Okay, could be is very important. It's very, uh, because we are doing the research now, we are going to start our work now, we don't know where it is going to be. Anytime our hypothesis can fail. Anytime while going through this, we might discover more information that our hypothesis fails. So every time we need to be aware that it is only a tentative claim, a tentative guess. It is not the final claim, but it is important to write it down. So if this is the claim, how do I prove it? What is the sequence of steps I should take? What is the sequence of experiments that I should do? What are the measurements I should make? Which population I should consider? What kind of questions I should ask the uh, uh, survey? All of these things will form the possible evidence. Just as claim is a guess, evidence is what is the possible evidence I should collect. So now when now, now you are very clear. I know that I might be I will be going that side. Okay. So that is a possible hypothesis. For my possible hypothesis, these are the possible evidence that I should gather. Okay. So that all these things have to be written down before you start. Okay. Now what we will do is to carry out this exercise for some project that you have already done. Okay. Just rewind yourself to beginning of that project work. At that time, there was a question. Okay. And then you have to propose a working answer. This is called a working answer or a tentative hypothesis that it, it is possibly there. So this tentative solutions, you write it in detail. So first of all, you have to define for yourself what your observation was clearly right. This is the observation. 
okay and therefore this is the question so write that clearly okay then i'll probably ask you to come here and tell what the observation was and what is the question now the question is defined what is the tentative solution right and then as i said what evidence possible evidence you have to gather because you have not started yet okay what possible evidence you have to carry and basically that you should be ready that it could be wrong right so yes let's do that now for the moment okay now just take uh what i will tell you later let's just do the first two steps now so please take any project that you have worked on okay could be a research project it could be a six month short project anything so you take that and define that this is the observation and this is the research question okay that you want to address so please write that and then write a tentative answer so just write it in one quarter of the page very small please write that in one quarter of the page and then we will tell you what is uh, the remaining things about so i will just leave it here yeah so observation question and based on some previous knowledge you come up with a claim which is your tentative hypothesis so if anybody has finished please raise your hands up and you can so i just want you to stop at observation question and a possible sir it has been observed that public sector banks have lacked in providing service to clients and this has led to declining relationship with clients okay public sector banks okay i think your observation is uh, the decline in uh, relationship with clients is that the observation or they have, you already it, concluded it, that it is because of this have have uh, lacked in providing uh, service uh, to clients okay this so, is my observation okay now what is the question uh, question is has it led to uh, a declining uh, relationship or will this poor service mm -hmm. lead to uh, a loss of customer base okay now so the question is uh, the observation is there is a loss of customer base no no there is a poor service poor service in terms of not responding to uh, clients uh, okay um, doubts or no, probably so the, the, what i am not clear is because you told both the things at the first sentence you said that there is poor service as well as decline no i added that actually the okay so you need to be clear so because is it is the observation that with regard to service that banks are rendering it's correct. poor now it can be two things both are possible that the um, relation the, this the cu customer uh, base is declining okay customer base of a particular blank is declining is the observation okay now the question is why is it declining why is the question now your hypothesis can be it is because of poor customer support that could be a hypothesis that need not be an observation okay or if i reverse it the way i started off so if you reverse it uh, you have already measured that there is poor service which is observation but you don't know whether there is a declining in customer uh, base yeah okay which is also okay so then you need to and what is the tentative claim now so you are asking is does customer base depend on uh, service, service quality okay okay so what is your hypothesis so hypothesis is service is quality it, does not affect uh, the consumer base. base so that is your claim that yeah. is a tentative claim your yeah. tentative claim is says that the service quality does not affect the consumer base correct yeah right so you have got a claim till now but um this one should have been based on some previous knowledge okay so let's say you are taking a look at only say canara bank or say state bank one bank maybe you have literature from uh, foreign banks which have made a study and you want to replicate for indian banks all right yeah okay so we'll stop that we'll take something else and come to the next step yes anybody else you can raise your hands and 
Yeah, Hello? my name is uh, GP Sahu. Uh, my area is MIS, Management Information System. So the topic that I, I am taking is related to MIS only. And the uh, observation is that only 15% of the e-governance projects are successfully implemented in developing country. And this I'm, of, of course, referring one literature. And That's fine. So this is the observation. Yeah, this is, is the observation yeah. that only 15% of the projects are successfully implemented, 35% partially implemented, and 50% of the projects are not, not implemented. Fair at enough. All. So what is the question? Based, based on the uh, observation, no, my question is that I need to identify the factors which are uh, no, responsible for uh, non not successful implementation of the projects. Okay. The so state the question as a question. Okay. What are the factors responsible for non-successful implementation non of non-successful imp implementation of okay. e-governance projects. Now project. this is a question. What are the factors? Therefore, the answer should be or the claim. Should okay. Be. The guess should be the. It should start with the factors are possibly, blah blah blah. Okay. So okay. I, I'll frame accordingly. The no, <coughs> the regions or the answer is the possible factors for non implementation of e-governance project successfully may be uh, resistance to change management, resistance to change may be one, providing appropriate training, then trust on the system, ease okay. of use. So let's take like some, that. so the question was what are the factors? The answer should be the possible factors are, okay, because now it is tentative, he is just beginning his project, so it's tentative, that's fine. So we will come to that. So I, I presume that these answers are coming from some previous knowledge, right? You have yeah. some in something that says some literature that says that these both are related, and right. therefore you're bringing that knowledge in some other domain to this domain, something of that sort, correct? Okay. okay. So let's about the hypothesis. Yeah. No. So this is your hypothesis. Okay. Your hypothesis is your answer. Your tentative claim is your hypothesis. You have not yet proved. You are just starting your research. Yes. Yeah. Hello, sir. I'm, I'm Kiran Amin from uh, UE Patel College of Engineering, uh, Gujarat. Uh, my area is like uh, data mining in computer science. The observation is to find a sequential data using a clustering technique in data mining in retail industry. No, this is not observation. Uh, actually, the observation is like uh, uh, the data patterns are various uh, uh, available where we are observing on uh, the sequential uh, sequence of the data. Hmm. So that we are observing on that particular data. Um, no, you, in, the observation is not quite clear. I mean, unless you have an observation, you should, then you need to formulate a question based on that observation. Okay. So le let's have uh, one more from uh, um, electrical or electrical Computer science, science or my colleague is there. Okay. Yeah, or, or yeah, you have got one. Your background is, ma'am? from electrical engineering okay, yes. uh, my observation is uh, uh, in mp there is an heavy uh, like huge uh, hydro resources and that reflects in hydropower installed capacity of the state also but still the power generation through thermal power plant is more okay so, so this in is Madhya my Pradesh, although there is a lot of hydro uh, power uh, possible the uh, thermal is more. Thermal gen generation through thermal is more. more. Okay. My Fair question enough. Uh, then, uh, my question is, uh, what kind of operation policy that we should evolve so that the maximum water resources of okay. the river so can be the, utilized? Yeah, what are the policies that has to be adapted for improving the percentage of water-based okay. uh, things? Okay. And uh, my hypothesis, uh, there may be a possible reason. One is improper management of the hydro no, no, resources. No, 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 no. Your answer, hypothesis is not answering your question. Possible reasons, I am telling. You, you didn't say possible reasons. Okay. Your question was, how do you improve? Hmm. Okay. If the question was, what are the reasons, then possible reasons are one thing. What are the reasons? So that's what I'm saying. Your question is need not be fixed. You need to match your question and answer always. Okay, okay. You don't start with one question and answer something else. If you answer something else, formulate a question which will be a question for that. Okay. So if your if your hypothesis is the possible reasons are this, 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 the question should be what are the reasons for low utilization so of hydro? Hydro resources. Okay, so, so that should be the question. Okay, the possible. Redefine the question. Okay. The possible reasons are improper management of the hydro resources other requirements from the hydropower plant as they are multi-purpose projects so maybe irrigation requirements and others are the more priority 
less efficient use of less efficient okay, machineries. So, that's so fine. like so this. Let's, some points like some this. Okay, so we'll like stop this. at that point. Okay. English, okay, yes, please. I'm uh, S. Shankar Kumar from uh, PSG College of Technology, Coimbatore. The observation is uh, <laughs> the engineering students uh, perform very poorly in reading comprehension tests. So uh, the possible question is that what are the different factors affecting the reading comprehension skills? And uh, the hypothesis developed, okay. Um, the different strategies, such as uh, a lack of reading skills, or family background, or the learning habit, and no, no. Uh, your question was, uh, your um, guess, guess is uh, no, you said what, what are the what are the factors are affecting the, factors? the reading comprehension okay. skills? Okay, so you are okay. saying family background, but why family does that reflect to engineering students' family background? Uh, especially uh, the. Uh, the people who have joined from a rural background and their uh, reading habits are very poor. Okay. So, no, their so education... No, when, when you propose a possible claim, claim. Okay. that claim should be based on some reason, right? Now, this reason, does it really say... The your lack question of was, engineering students lack... Reading, reading comprehension skills. skills. Okay. Yeah. Engineering students lack reading skills. So, the... Yeah. Answer should, to that should be engineering students lack reading skills because blah blah blah. That uh, blah 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 should be related to something of engineering. Okay. Not yeah. just, but you are saying why do people of this age yeah, okay. um, lack engineering skills? Then you can bring family background. But family okay. background is not exactly related to there. this, okay. right? So you modify and uh, yeah. okay. well, match yes. question and answer yes. each well, other. Okay. So I'll take probably one more from mechanical sciences or basic sciences. Sir, I'm from production engineering department. Production engineering, yes, yes please. Sir, I'm Nagesh from production engineering department. So the observation made is different levels of energy efficiency is observed in micro, small and medium enterprises in foundry industry. Okay. So this is the observation. The question, research question is, why does energy efficiency varies within MSME cluster? Okay. So the proposed hypothesis is a set of technical and non-technological factors influence. I have that list. Okay, fair enough. That's fine. So it's, it's clearly there is a question and the answer is directly answers this. Thing. So anybody from basic sciences? Sir, I'm talking about the question you just asked. Yeah. Yeah. So there are a section of students who are coming late to college. So the thing is that what could the reason be for they are coming too late? Right. So the thing is the claim part where maybe there is a waterlogging problem in that area. So those are the students who come late that way. I okay. mean, that may no. be one possible reason. Like Okay. No, I, I just want something from basic sciences in the sense that some research question people have done. Yes, please. Hello. Uh, sir, I'm working on nanocrystalline material. Yeah. So my observation is that materials which are found to be diametric, magnetic, in their bulk form, they found to be ferromagnetic in their nanocrystalline form. Okay. So um, this is what this is what is the observation, and then now the question: Why there is change in this magnetic behavior Perfect. when bulk from nanocrystalline? Perfect. And uh, until now, large large number of literature work is going on on this topic. That's right. So what is the possible? What is your yeah. what is your take on? What is your guess? Why does it happen? Uh, the hypothesis behind this is that there, this there may be due to presence uh, presence of capping agent on the material uh, may affect the behavior. This is oh. was, this is the hypothesis. Fair enough. Fair enough. Just we'll, let's stop there. So uh, I think we have got a reasonable uh, breadth of uh, questions. So the essential point is that you need to match the question to the answer, and the answer which is in your domain, you know why because of some reason that is the answer. Okay. Now now let's go to the next step. The next step is evidence. So now it is what is the possible evidence that you need to gather, okay? What are the possible evidence that you need to gather to show that your claim is true, which is this, okay? If this claim is explains, if this hypothesis explains observation, it also should explain something else, okay? From the scientific method, if hypothesis explains observation, Hypothesis should explain something else also, 
what is that? So what is the evidence that you need to gather? Okay, so spend next five minutes, take any one particular claim, you might have a list of claims, okay? You have a list of claims, we will come to uh, handling a list of claims now, just take one claim, okay? If you have multiple factors, just take one factor. For this factor to be true, what are the possible evidence that you need to gather? Okay, so please write that down in the next five minutes. What are the possible evidence that you need to gather either by experiment or by conducting a survey or by solving an equation, whatever. So quickly tell your observation, question, claim and possible evidence. Okay, sir. Uh, my observation is rural students perform poorly in English. Rural students perform poorly in English so my question is what are the reasons behind this poor performance in english so my hypothesis is it is due to the less exposure of english and fear of english my uh, evidence is i can uh, possible give, evidence so make yeah, possible, possible evidence, evidence i can give you by checking the score of students in the examination especially related to the no, no what was the claim what was it poor because of uh, because of less exposure of English and fear of English. Okay. So, less exposure and fear, hmm. how will you measure it by uh, exam marks? Yes, exam sir. marks is basically saying they are poor in English. Hmm. That is your, that just reinforces your observation. Hmm. That they have poor exam marks is basically reinforcing your observation. That's not a new evidence. That is the evidence somebody yeah. else had gathered yeah, the, and you are using. But now for your claim to be true, you should show, what did you say? Uh, exposure, exposure and fear. So you should show evidence which can measure exposure and yes, relate it to the marks. There are other things. Or, no, no, no. You are, now let's say, you have said exposure and fear are the two things. Let's say that are the possible. We don't know there are other things. But if exposure is true, then you have to measure exposure some way and relate it to marks. Similarly, you have to measure fear some way and relate it to marks. So that will be your possible set of experiments that you need to do. Okay. Higher education system is to serve the purpose of imparting knowledge, skills and hands-on experience to the graduate students. But in doing so, it has been found the conventional teacher-centric methods have failed in giving uh, uh, training in, in, in interpersonal skills to the graduate students. So why uh, it, th this has been observed, observed, this is my observation and in such situations the collab collaborative methods like group discussion will help uh, in training engineering students in interpersonal skills. So your Please claim is that um, your uh, group discussions, okay, or collaborative things uh, like group discussions will improve interpersonal skills. Inter uh, the interpersonal right. skills. So, what is the possible evidence that you should take? Uh, maybe we can conduct a GD by giving a topic and uh, uh, make no, them involved in that process. We are talking about a generic phenomena that is happening over many things, not for your college alone. So, you should need to gather lot of experiments where in colleges where they have GD, their students, inter, inter, their teachers coming out of that college are better. In colleges where they don't have GD, the students coming out are poor, something of that sort. It should be a generic. Okay, then I need to narrow down my, you know, that approach and right. focus on uh, skill based subjects like communication skills. Oh, okay, fine. Now, we'll just continue. What I'm going to tell you is one way to organize work. So, the one thing that has come out from here which reiterates what Guru said in the morning, two things. One is write every day and then writing makes your thoughts even clearer, right? Now, for example, just by even before doing your work, you are writing, okay? That's the first thing. Why? Because it makes your thoughts clearer. Now, when you write this, and then let's say you present it to your colleagues, like the way you present it to this audience, people can question you. No, this is not related. So then your thoughts become even more clear. You say that, okay, I should refine my 
question or I should refine my claim or I should say that okay this experiments will not work I have to find some other evidence okay so that is the exact thing that happens by clearing your thoughts when you are doing uh, writing even before you start doing the work okay so you are writing a mini paper now right this is like a mini paper something which you should have done after the work is over but you are not doing that you should start doing it before you actually do that because that is going to guide your thoughts to be more precise and more uh, clear in where to go in your day to day like what do I do tomorrow right how do you answer that question some of these things you make clear okay I know that these things does not work so these are the things I should go and try so that is why writing is so important in clarifying uh, thoughts to yourself it also helps if you present to somebody else and get it clarified but first to yourself okay now what I am going to tell you is one method to organize all these thoughts like for example so Ganesh had a question what are the different factors okay so he had three or four factors now she also had some four or five factors for Heidel power so what you do is what we call as building a storyboard okay this is again one way to do it it's not the the only way so a storyboard you anybody heard of what storyboard is people from storyboarding how do you uh, write stories storyboarding in uh, they typically where do you use storyboarding animation animation basically in in uh, movie making people use storyboard so this concept of storyboard has been this is again from that book yesterday I mentioned is a craft of research by the Chicago group uh, so they bring this to you uh, say that we could also use some of this concept and that's what I'm going to tell you so you create a storyboard like this a storyboard is basically a collection of cards okay like a movie has got a story as he said Rama came the, they went to forest Ravana all that killed over that's a very small story right but there is something called a screenplay what's a screenplay the exact sequence in which you present these facts anybody has seen the movie uh, pulp fiction you will not understand the movie if you watch it once okay because the movie is not played linearly the story is linear okay not one scene one set of scenes is placed in a linear way the way it has been placed is completely random but it, you seem as though you where you started off with that's where it ends okay suppose in a normal film Rama was born he became big and went to king then Ravakusha is born also a linear sequence but this movie starts at one point of time ends at the same point of time okay so the story is actually very simple okay again the story is based. the screenplay is what makes things little more attractive about this so similarly when you are writing a creative work you can present in a linear way you can present in some creative way so storyboarding is typically used in creative arts where they write that these are the different parts of the story if I put this in this sequence it sounds interesting okay so what I am going to tell you is not how a particular thing will be interesting that is up to you one thing that we could learn is what are the techniques used by these artists to make things interesting so they use this method called as storyboarding in storyboarding you place independent facts as one card each is one card okay and then finally when you are ready to write the I mean when you write the paper of course you have been writing bits and portions of the paper but when you are when you see that okay if I present this facts in a particular sequence it sounds more interesting you might have done a particular experiment one and then second experiment two three four five doesn't mean that if you, you should present historically the way 
it was done in your lab. Not necessarily. You could present something which is most interesting first, okay, or present the most boring thing first and keep the end very exciting, whatever it is. So that is a creative part. I cannot tell anything about that. But this is a method you can use to mix and match as artists or artists do. So what do we do? So for each topic, okay, remember TQS, topic, question, significance, claim, reason, evidence. For each topic, you have one card which writes the question on the top. So it's a collection of say A4 size papers or half of A4. So write the question on the top and write what are the possible answers. Okay. So let's suppose somebody says what are the factors, list the factors. 1, 2, 3. Now for each of this claim, why do you think it is the reason? For claim 1, you have a reason and if this claim is true, what are the possible evidence that you should gather? That is card 1. Similarly for card 2, card 3, for each of these claims. Now at the end, so this is beginning of your research, right? The end you will find some of them are true, some of them are false, but still they have a value. Even if a failed, a failed hypothesis is of value, why is the failed hypothesis of value? You do an experiment, it fails, why is it of value? No, no, that is true, but it is of a value that you need to tell others. Yeah? That's one way to not do it. Yeah. So basically, if you think of a possible answer, Okay, at the beginning of your research that this could be a possible answer in your domain, there will be 1000 other people who would have thought the same thing. So you are helping others to eliminate it. Okay, so every failed hypothesis is also as good thing to be communicated. So you have to list down all the possible things that you thought could be a thing. Okay, even if 10 of them fail and only one succeed. It's very important to communicate all 10 of them. All right. So that's why this thing that, okay, I thought this could be a possible claim. This could be a possible answer. And I did the following experiments and it failed. Therefore, this is not true. And therefore, and therefore, and all those things. So now you have a sequence of each thing is a unit, right? Each thing is a unit. And then later you mix and match, that is up to you. How do you want to present? Either you present logically or you present chronologically or make most interesting first, most interesting next, either way, that's up to you. Okay. And then a final thing which is not ready now. Okay. The final thing will be ready after you have finished the work. Now this is things which are at the beginning. A beginning a tentative answer, a possible answer, a guess, later at the end of the year becomes your claim, the final claim that you have as a claim to this question. That becomes the only claim that remains or one or two things that are remaining. And you are you're taking a guess, why is it so? I think it is so because of this possible reason. But you might discover that that may not be the reason. But ultimately, the one which survives you will find a reason. So guess becomes a reason and the possible evidence becomes the actual evidence because you have completed the exercise by now. And then you write one final conclusion. So each paper is consisting of these individual cards, individual packets of information. How you put them, it's your creative work. But these are the things that has to go. Okay, so this is one way to organize your work, before you start the work, you are doing the work and after you complete the work. Okay? So when you start to write a paper, you already have all these facts, right? all these cards, facts are always there. 
Now, when you want to write a paper and put everything together, uh, a few things, few suggestions are as follows. You start with an introduction. Introduction is one portion of the paper which you write twice, not once. First time you write, it is for yourself. Okay? It is for you to guide your writing of how you are going to present these facts. You have gathered the storyboard, you say, okay, I am going to present it this order. You have some order in mind. That order you put it in introduction. Okay? So that will actually, the, the first time you write introduction, that is for you. You write an introduction which will guide you to write the other portions of the paper. Okay? Then after you finished everything reasonably, one or two drafts, it has gone through corrections and all. Then you come back. Now that would have taken a nice structure now, which may not be what you started off with in your introduction. Now you write an introduction for the readers. Remember when you read the paper, you read the abstract introduction and conclusions, the first pass. Now you would expect that anybody else also would do the same thing. So therefore, you need to bring out the story or the suspense or whatever it is that you want to convey in the introduction for the readers. First time you write for yourself, second time for the readers. Otherwise, how do you start to write an introduction with a current situation? What is the background in a sense? And but your question, you say that something is wrong. Everything is known, but something is not working. It's like a disruptive question you ask. Okay? So we know all these things, but this is not known. And then you explain the question significance. And if possible, you also give a hint to the answer. If not the actual answer, you give a hint to the answer. So people who are reading your work, just by reading abstract and introduction, get a complete picture of they don't they may not know the details. Just like you didn't want to know the details of the three papers I gave you yesterday. You didn't want to know the details in the first 10 minutes. But you wanted to get a gist of what's happening. Similarly, you want to give a gist. So give them the question also, give an answer or at least a gist of the answer. Okay? And then uh, you need to write, use keywords. Okay? Typically, keywords are the ones that unites the paper. And you use the same set of keywords throughout from the introduction, abstract and conclusion. Even if they are synonyms, don't use synonyms. Okay? For example, uh, don't use variations of a word. In one particular thing, uh, I don't know what, I'm not getting a quick example that everybody can understand. So, okay, maybe procedure and method hmm, are synonyms, right? So, in one place, you tell a procedure to drop this and some other place, you say method to drop this. So, although it's technically the same, but try to use the same word consistently throughout. Okay? Because procedure method is a very trivial thing, but when it comes to technical things, there are several things which look similar, but people who are reading it for the first time may not think so. So do not use words which are synonyms differently at different places. If you want, use in bracket and reiterate in couple of places, but never use it independently in at least in abstract introduction and conclusion. Inside, it is okay. But people who are reading it the first time should not get confused that, okay, you are doing two, three or four different things while you are actually probably doing only one. You have just stated different technical words for it. Okay? So, once you have done with one or two of this, when you are going through a final, coming to a final draft, you have to rewrite the introduction. And now, you have to rewrite for a audience, not for yourself. So I will just quickly uh, write. And your claim should be restated in a simple language in the conclusion again. So ensure keywords are included. And the title of your paper, although you might write a preliminary title at the beginning, the title of the paper is the last thing you have to write. Okay? It's a because now you know the full structure. Even that might go, usually what happens, we decide on one title, 
you send the paper for public publication, reviewers come with some comment, then you start working on something else, then you have included, you modified the character of the paper, you must consider rewriting the title. Okay? Because title is the first thing to be read and title is one thing which you should summarize in a very beautiful and crisp way that not only captures attention but also exp uh, brings out the chief contributions of this paper. It is not a general thing, right? What are the key contributions of this paper? That should come out in the title. So, that is usually written last. Okay? So, again the uh, books I have used are both from this Chicago uh, group. Um, both of them Indian editions are available, you can consult them. Okay, so, uh, the reason I am, what I am going to motivate here in the next 5 minutes is why we need to use uh, little sophisticated uh, documentation systems rather than the simple word based uh, systems. Okay, a brief history of uh, what Many of you will not have this as a problem. Most of us would have seen typesetting in our previous ages, right? But current students probably have not even heard of what typesetting is, okay? For them, typesetting is only on a computer, okay? Now, the history is as follows. So, the computerized typesetting came sometime in late 70s when a mathematician called uh, Nuth had actually spent lot at least many number of PhDs who are working with him to uh, work on the algorithms of typesetting. Okay? So, these, these are all detailed PhD thesis which came out as of what we know as LaTeX now. Okay? So, something like how to break lines and pages, this is a mathematical problem. Okay? It is not, so this was all an art so far. So, till 70s, it was an art. People used to ins insert the spaces and then create so that everything comes neatly, right? All that was an art till 70s when uh, he worked on all this uh, um, algorithms. In fact, he came out with uh, typeface designs and so on, okay? So, it is one that started off like this. Now, you have several um, languages known as markup languages. Um, SGML is the one which is used in uh, industry level, okay. In publication industries, they use SGML and at the, uh, at the layman level, you have this Microsoft Office, Open Office and so on, okay. Now, LaTeX documentation system is in between these both, okay. While it allows the uh, professional quality that comes out of this, okay, it also gives you some convenience of uh, other software because these things are industrial standards which cannot be used by uh, layman like us right so so basically there are two ways of formatting uh, any content one is known as markup other is called as vcvig a markup is something like this that you tell what it should be you say that this scientific documentation is a title, introduction is a section or in HTML markup you say that anti day should come as H1, this is a paragraph and so on. This is called as marking up. So, you tell what should appear as that, you tell what is the nature of that object. You do not tell that it should be 16 point bold. Okay? You do not tell title is 16 point bold, you do not tell that here. That is the difference between markup and SGML. Whereas, in VCVIG, you know what VCVIG? What you see is what you get. Basically, whatever you type and see on the screen, that is directly printed out, that is how it will be. But here, it is not like that. Text is annotated. You give annotations to text like this. So, there are advantages and dis disadvantages of this. In markup, what happens is you are we are all content providers. Okay? When I write a paper, I tell what should be the title, uh, what should be the chapter title, what should be the section heading, what should be the abstract, and so on. I am not a professional typesetter. Okay? Like in the previous years, what happened? You wrote it in paper 
and gave it to your uh, type printing press they will compose it and give it to you okay but now with the convenience of word we think we are all great uh, typesetter designers and we put all sorts of fonts colors any bold faces arbitrarily okay that that has made the quality of publications very poor okay which is one reason that at least in iit we insist many of our many of the departments insist that they should use one of this professional quality markups rather than just word so with word there is so much convenience and so much flexibility people just forget the aesthetics of a document okay so what markup does is basically you outsource the typesetting to somebody else the designer takes care of it whereas in word you have to do all those things yourself although it is possible but it is so convenient that people simply say bold 16 point and just leave it there okay there is lot of convenience which people don't know why something has to be done that way but whereas in markup you just don't have the flexibility design is done by somebody else you just use that design and say that okay this has to come like this i will as a content provider i only tell which should be the title which should be the section heading the designer will tell whether it should be 16 point bold or some other designer will say it will be 14 point italic okay that is not my job my job is to provide a good scientific document how it should appear is a professional job done by somebody else and latex provides you that professionalism any document that you see that's print made in latex has got this professionalism in it okay so uh this is something like the time it takes to make a document so this is a simplest document this is most complex document simplest document like a one page letter then letter article or a technical report thesis report book and multi part book means there are several volumes in a book and here i have just put the rough number of hours it takes to do these things using latex and some visivig software so as you see this dark line is visivig and one page essay you can do less than an hour provide the content is there but in latex it may take 4 to 5 years if you are doing for the first time once you are used to it it is okay but otherwise it takes you might make some mistakes and so on but once it comes to somewhere an article the amount of effort that goes into correcting a word document where you have figures flying off tables going to something else page numbers not coming reference not coming is so much unnecessary time which is not your duty to bother about okay so which is why we insist that beyond certain point beyond this letter kind of point remember this is in the logarithmic scale something which will take an article which will uh, take let's say the article is completely ready okay it's not that you're changing the article let's say article is ready you're just putting it in electronic form now putting in electronic form in word and getting it right for an article will easily take few days whereas in latex it's hardly a day or two you just need to type it and say what has to come where and if you have little exposure to the uh, because it's basically a programming language and people who are not familiar with programming languages find it difficult which is one sad thing because usually we see this used only in people who have exposed to some level of programming they made some small mistake but it's not very difficult to learn so what i will do is i will i'll take a quick survey if uh, this thing will be useful you think will be useful then we'll have we'll not have a detailed workshop module it's difficult but i'll certainly have a small module in the online part where people can do some small exercises and come so do you think is it is of use can we add it to the face to face session no the, the problem with introducing in the face to face session is they need to bring uh, a computer where something is installed while i'll give instructions to do that we'll give instruction in fact the reason i had asked you to bring laptops is for this session but unfortunately we we didn't have time to do that okay i will give you instructions once you go back i'll put up the instruction what what are the for for each of windows and linux there are small things that are available which you can download and quickly do it i'll provide all that but you can decide whether you want to do it for face to face or not okay so it's 3:30 we'll stop here now